Hey, shalom, everybody. Shalom. Welcome to The Way Remnant. I am Jeff Brandon. And I'm Miranda Brandon. And we're kind of live tonight. We're uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> we're doing uh, we're pre-taping this one, guys, a little bit in advance. Uh, we're starting a new series, uh, How I Came to Toro. Uh, we're excited tonight. We're going to bring on Austin York tonight. He will be our first uh, first one to come on. He'll be on in just a little bit, but we have a couple announcements to make tonight. Uh, you know, uh, we've been in, we've been kind of having a contest or saying that once we hit 200 viewers, we were going to do another drawing for our uh, book. Um, uh, and gosh, we, we went from 181 last week to 215. So nice little jump. So we're very excited. Uh, we appreciate it, uh, everyone. We mentioned last, uh, last week during the video, during that special night of prayer that we had that. We would announce a uh, a word. Uh, so if you guys are interested in, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you wait for the whole video, guys. Listen, I'm not into all that. If you want to watch the video, you'll watch the video. Uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna say if you're interested and want to be in that drawing as as a way of us saying thank you for all the subscribers. If you will in this video, okay, uh, type the word Nephilim. There we go. How about that? That's a good way to do it. Type the word Nephilim. So everybody that does a comment uh, in in this video, it will let it run for about a week. Uh, if you want to be in that drawing for a free copy of our book, uh, and, and I'll, I'll sign it and send it to you free of postage, everything like that, uh, just just write the word Nephilim, and we'll uh, we'll include you with that. So. Uh, baby, I'm excited about tonight. I am too. Oh my gosh, we get so excited. We read so many uh, amazing testimonies uh, about uh, people coming to Torah. You know, we all have a good uh, word to share about that. And uh, so let's let's just go ahead and uh, let's work on bringing Austin on. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right, we're flipping over. And Austin, are you there? I am. Hello. Hey. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom. Good to see you. How are you doing I'm tonight? I'm doing fantastic. We had a little Super bit. Of, we had a little technical difficulty getting things set up, but I think we're good now. Uh, I think yeah. your your audio is coming in good. You're you're good and crisp and clear. Uh, you were you're a little busy tonight. You guys, you had a yeah. You had a football. I have game. six. I have six kids, five dogs, six <laughs> seven cats. Oh. Three hamsters, a snake, and two rats. There we go. <laughs> so we're always on top of things. <laughs> you, got, you have a lot going on, brother. Well, we, and, oh, yeah, I can't say that right now. I'll lie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? We're, uh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. We do know. We know. Yep, yep, yep. yep. You almost uh -huh. heard it here first, people. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that's good, brother. That's good. Hey, you know, Austin, you've you've actually been following our ministry for quite some time. Uh, so we two years, yes. Yeah, we really appreciate it. We we love you. I mean, we we talk sometimes, and and I I just think a lot of you. And so we're we're real honored to have you on tonight. You're actually the first. You're going to be the first in this series uh, that we're having is uh, how I came to Torah. So we we're super excited to have you on tonight. Uh, I know. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. So we we sent you. Have you ever shared your testimony on on air before? No, I have not. Okay. I mean, I've, I've sat there and, and talked about it to two other people, and it it, it opens a lot of people's. They're like, really? That, that okay? Yeah. You know, they they have their their not like necessarily their eyes are open, but they're just like, okay, I, I'm, I'm. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, tonight, uh, tonight's unscripted, you know, uh, we did yeah. send you some, uh, some questions, but you know, however the spirit of God leads you, we, we, you know, we're a spirit filled ministry. We believe in being led by the spirit. So, uh, we'll, we'll start off tonight. Uh, what, what year did you, what year did you come to Torah? Well, it was around 2018. Okay. I was driving down the road one day. And it's actually kind of crazy how all this happened. Um, I was married for 10 years. And then 
one day I'm sitting on the back porch in 2000, uh, I think it was 2017, at the time that the Revelation 12 sign was happening in the heavens. Right. At, at that exact time, I'm sitting on my back porch asking God, am I supposed to be here? Oh, am I supposed to be here? And his answer was no. Now, me and my wife were not, we didn't have, we weren't like in any arguments or anything like that. It was just like, she started seeing somebody else and I had issues with pornography. Yeah. So sexual immorality. Hey, bro, was, I, listen, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I was, I, you know, I think you've probably even heard me talk about that before. I was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've been in the ministry for almost, gosh, almost 30 years. And it, it was a roller coaster with me until y'all delivered me just, uh, what, maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. Does that sound about right? Just completely delivered me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thank you for coming out and saying that I, you know, you were a believer that had problems with pornography. Praise, praise y'all. Yeah. See, and, uh, so with that with that sexual immorality that we both had, yeah, we looked at she came and she sat down on the bed, and I asked this question. Two days later, she sits on the bed and says, "I think we need to get a divorce." Wow. I said, "Okay." Wow. We're going to go through with this. I'm not. There was no argument. There was no, you know. Oh, I'm trying. Let's let's try to work this out. No, it was. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I asked God a question. He gave me an answer, and I wanted to go with that. And we told everybody in the family the next morning. And I got my stuff and I left. Went to a friend's house and got to find out she was seeing somebody. And I was actually nice enough to say I at least want to meet the man. Yeah. You know, I went, there was no hard feelings or anything like that. Right. Um, now, so I, I moved to Lono in Ar Lono, Arkansas. Moved out of out of out of Maumel. It was probably about uh, 30, 40 miles away. Anyways, um, I lived there for about three years, and in that period of time, I went to a church and met someone, and we started dating, and this entire time I was married, and after the divorce, I was always listening to the scriptures. Yeah. Something always told me, at least put it in your ears. Right. I can't read very well. If you sit here and let me read this. Yeah, I, it will take me forever to get a few passages down. Wow, which is a blessing to me, knowing that, that I'm an unlearned, ordinary person. Yeah, that can't hardly read anything, really. Right, like it takes me. I have to have somebody to fill out my my paperwork when I go to a, any kind of office or anything like that. Right. I just have so much trouble with it. But to have somebody that cannot read and sit here and quote scripture from beginning to the end of Revelation mm. is a miracle. Yeah, in itself. That's good. And I only came to that realization until one day I'm driving down the road and I'm calling my pastor. I says, I'm like, the Sabbath day. Are we supposed to be keeping the Sabbath day? Like, what, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah. And he gave me an answer that I was not satisfied with. Yeah. So I didn't start following it right then. I was like, no, I'm, I'm just going to see what's going on. Then I came across Parable of the Vineyard. Mm. And I started watching their videos with Justin Best and Adam Fink. Yep. And then Rob Skiba coming on some shows. And then at that time, I started, I broke up with my girlfriend that I was dating. But actually, I was quoting the song, the Psalms about the adulterous woman. <laughs> and she gets so mad, she left me. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she wow. was so controlling. I couldn't even go to the gas station by myself. Wow. But um, So I was all upset about that. And I asked my stepmother, I said, can I come to your house and pray? I need to pray. Yeah. She said, of course. So we went to her house, went upstairs, had a huge move of the spirit. We both started speaking in tongues, but just bawling. And wow. just the spirit just fell upon me hard. Praise y'all. Praise get down stairs, I get downstairs and I look at her and I say, I think we need to start keeping the commandments. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, no, that's, that's, that's for Jews. Stuff. I'm like, no, I, I think we're supposed to be living like Jews. Yeah. We're supposed to be living like them. 
like they live, not necessarily the, all the traditions that right. that go against the word of God. Actual, actual but, Judaism. But, yeah, yeah we post our, our, our holidays and our, our the things that we do. So I thought about it, it's like all of our Christian holidays have all to do with self indulgence, right? And then all of the the feast things have everything to do with Him. Amen. It's That's the complete good. opposite. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, I didn't know what to do. So the day I kept the Sabbath, the first day I kept the Sabbath, I was sitting outside and my sister pulls up and she says, we need to go get my daughter some school supplies. I said, well, it's the Sabbath day. I want, I want to keep the Sabbath. I'll go get it tomorrow or when the night falls, you know, when the sun goes down. Yeah. She looked at me and she said, you are stupid. But as soon as that happened, as yeah. soon as that happened, it was like a flood of understanding and uh -huh. water just flowed over me. It was oh, like I was good. covered in oil and I couldn't get off my skin. Yeah. I went to the house. I went inside. Everything yeah. that I listened to for that past seven years just came back into my ears. Oh. And I hit the ground. Wow. I hit the ground so hard that, that it, I just started bawling. My daughter walked up to me and said, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, there's nothing wrong. Oh. I understand now. That's and beautiful. from that point on, you know, it took me a couple of weeks to get rid of the bacon and all that. But once I <laughs> once I started doing that, those things, once I started keeping his feast or his not his feast, but his uh, dietary instructions, yeah, I physically started seeing things that were unclean. Oh, yeah. I started noticing things that were unclean. Yeah. And that's what the scripture says it would do. It says it will tell you what is clean and what is unclean. It oh. has nothing to do with food. That good. It has nothing to do with food. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> that's great, man. That's why Paul says that the, that the Torah is spiritual. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but that's man. that's what started that. It was just I wow. asked a question a few years before this. Wow. Or not about a few months before I, I I started keeping the Sabbath. I said, Father, show me the right way. In your word, it says that you are going to have them to be prophets. I want to yeah. seek that 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 ministry of prophecy. I want to be one of your holy people who can declare your word, yeah. no matter what happens. Yeah. And he gave me this urgency that I cannot help. I have been in the scriptures every single day since that point. Praise Yah! Praise Yah! Now, That's great. And it's a, people get annoyed, get annoyed with it. That's all I talk about. The time <laughs> I wake up, the time I go to bed. Yeah. But the thing about it is, in Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to cause you to do these things. Yeah. What? I, I'm, I'm doing this because he's doing this in me? Right. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. He says it's like fire shut up in your bones. Yeah. And, and you know, I, if, I, I if, can't if, want to give it out. If people don't yeah. understand what Ezekiel's talking about there, then they, they really need to get a a fresh revelation of who mm -hmm. God is. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and and the importance of his word. I mean, we that's something that we talk about a lot is that we have yeah. we have friends and different family members that just kinda you know, just kinda float around and do their old thing, you know. And I I'm speaking I've gosh, I've got tons of that in my life, you know, and and you see folks that uh it, it's just like they don't take things Hey, we're we're talking about the Creator's Word. Yes. You know, El the light of creation. The yeah. very first sentence in the in the, in the Torah. You know, let there be light. That light was not the sun, moon, or stars. That light was the Torah. Uh, there was yeah. nothing. Nothing can be made without a Torah for it to be made. That's good. That, that has to have a creation. That's right. There has to be a law for a creation. Yeah. Every animal has its own law. A fly does what a fly does. Yeah. A pig does what a pig does. Yeah. A cow does what a cow does. We are the only ones in creation who are set apart from everybody else in the creation yep. who was set apart to where we have the choice to either do right or do wrong. Oh, that's not that right. we did not. But once he once they took that, it was it was taken from us. We we our holiness was gone. Yeah. We are now now we are truly set apart from everybody else. Yeah. Or every uh creation in the in everything. Yeah. You you so, uh you mentioned that it took you a little bit to get to get on the dietary laws. It, yeah. it took me probably about six months to be honest. Mm. I was yeah. I was arguing with the Holy Spirit and like you know, gosh, uh, I, I I grew up eating squirrels and catfish and 
oh, you yeah. know, trying to see exactly how much. Oh, my favorite thing is going squirrel hunting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I made a little pouch. The first squirrel I killed was one of the biggest ones I've ever shot or ever even seen. Yeah. And I made a pouch out of it so that I would put all my 22. So whenever I go squirrel hunting, I would use a, use a squirrel pouch. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's beautiful, brother. It's really beautiful. Um, did you have... So was there a specific verse that really got you to say, hey, there's something to this Torah? Well, it was, honestly, it was the dietary instructions. Really? Okay, it now, was the dietary instructions. I've, remember, never, remember? I've, I've never heard someone say they were they were brought to Torah by the dietary. Do tell. Well, I wasn't brought to Torah in the dietary instructions, but everything else from that point made uh -huh. sense okay once i once i said you know i'm going to live to where i'm going not going to take anything unclean inside my body mm -hmm. that's when i started seeing everything in the scriptures of what was clean and what was unclean uh, and yeah and so that was your I started eye opening. Doing, that was my eye-opening thing it's like okay this is why we're not to do these things yeah. you know and it was it, it was wild like that was now whenever i see that ezekiel passage and it yeah. says that he will cause you to walk in his laws to guard his right rulings and to to do his righteous deeds yeah. and all that that blew my mind because yeah. once once i kept the sabbath like self-consciously i wanted to do it my, by myself yeah you know that once that happened it was like a download of, okay, when Christ says, seek first the kingdom, and everything else will be given to you. Yeah. That's what I was seeking for. I was seeking the kingdom. I was seeking the Father. Right. I was seeking his word. And then all that understanding came later. Wow. You know? That's good. That's I, good. I want to ask the next one, too. Okay. If you don't mind. Go ahead. So, when I first started seeing that I should be keeping Torah, my flesh rose up and just gave me a fit. And I was warring with my flesh. Mm -hmm. I was crying and I, my flesh was going, this is impossible. Just forget mm -hmm. you ever read those verses and, and pretend like this never, ever happened. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a moment like that? Did you have a moment where your flesh oh, yeah. was like, no? Oh yeah. I was working at a place called Delta Wellscreen and, um, no lie, ever, I set an alarm for two times out of the day at work where I would literally go into their, their restroom area and I would hit the floor and I would just pray. Yeah. And I was praying to get all of the things that were not of him out of me. Wow. And that was, and, and, and I'm not saying that I'm still fully successful. Yeah, you know, I'm still, yeah. I'm still a baby. I'm still learning. Yeah, you know, I've only been doing this for three years, yeah. <laughs> or two years, or so three years, um, and but the the growth that I had spiritually is unsurmountable. I can't, I can't even explain mm. the the understanding of, of what he has given me. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But yeah, I, I struggled with. You know with the dietary instructions for one and i struggled with you know pornography and i struggled with because i was single and man shall not be alone because yeah. wicked things come into his mind <laughs> whenever well, a man is alone you know, you know uh you bring up a point there you know uh, paul talks about that we're supposed to renew our minds by the word yes. of god and one of the things that, that has gone on is we have been really raised in the world system mm -hmm. we've, yes. been, we've been taught that we yeah we've we've been taught that these things are okay it's this says this says pg-13 or this says you know <laughs> no you know what if, if there's no. <clears throat> if there's things in there that are causing an arousal i'm not even talking pornography i'm talking about watching yeah. tv a commercial some kind of music oh you know, I, I turned my radio off in my truck, and I didn't listen to a radio on my truck for three years. Even now, when I go driving down the road, I'm either listening to the scriptures or I'm not listening to anything at all. People, when I don't listen to anything, 
I talk to myself, I talk, not really talking to myself, I'm talking to the spirit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we've learned more by just talking to the spirit, not listening to anything else, but just what the spirit is teaching me. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, I have anything else. Man, that's beautiful. I mean, I can sit here and watch teachings all day, but it doesn't compare to what the spirit will teach you whenever you're in silence. One one little nugget that the spirit of God can yes. give you will, will can blow you up and take you well, the rest of your I'll life. tell you about the parable of the trees that he taught me. Like yeah. this, this creation in itself. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, why, why don't we save that for another night? Uh, oh, yeah. Because I, I, I do want to keep going with this. Let, yeah. Big question. How did your family react about keeping Torah? Not well. Yeah. Um, I think I think a lot of people share that. And that's one of the, and yeah. I want to hear your words because that's one of well, the reasons we're doing it. Honestly, this. it was probably my fault. Honestly, it was probably, it, I know it was my fault at first. Yep. Because when I first got into it, I was mad. Yeah. I was so angry yeah. and so frustrated mm -hmm. at the pastors and, and just the people who were just like, you're, you're crazy. You're not, you're just a Jew. I was like, I'd rather be a Jew than a Gentile. I mean, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I was, I, I was, I was upset. And when I told my sister, I was like, his name was not Jesus. It was Yeshua. And she was like, you're crazy. I was like, no, this is what the word says. And then like, and then I'm driving down the road with my mom and she says, you need to, you know, I didn't have a job for, for six months. I will always had a job. Yeah. COVID or COVID hit. I lost my job. I didn't work for six months. He provided for me in those six months. I have got, it, it's mind blowing things that, that happened within that period of time. But I'm driving down the road and my mom's saying, you need to do this and do that. It's like, well, I have a job to do. I have a ministry to start. I have something that I need to start doing. So I am, I am a preacher. I am someone who is going to preach the word. Yeah. And she got mad at me and she stops on the middle of the freeway yeah. Tells me to get out of the car. I said, well, I'm taking my daughter with me. Wow. And she said, no, you're not. It's like, no, I, I got wow. mad. And uh, uh, I was upset, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sin. But I, I have been, I felt like I can't speak around my family. Yeah. So I mean, is that, it, is that do, you, do you think that's still going on today? Not as much because when I first started in there, I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, this, 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 yeah. and it wasn't about that. It's never been about, you know, you know, follow the commandments to be said. No, it's not about that. It has no. nothing to do with yeah. it. It's, it's, it's about you walking in his commandments and people see what you're doing and want to do what the things that you are doing to please the father. Yeah. So whenever somebody sees you do something nice, that's or good. doing something like, for example, there's a guy I work with, you know, I wear my zit seats every day. There you go, brother. You know? Yeah. I never, I never take them off. I've had those on. Those have been the biggest blessing that right. I've had in the past three years. Yeah. I had, this is right here is what causes me to look down and, and think of his word every single day. That's what the scripture talks so, about. Hallelujah, brother. Yeah. And, but the guy that I work with, um, I'm, sit there and talk to him and, and we've had, you know, ups and downs on, on conversations, but there was a point in time where I was like, all right, we're not going to have any conversation. Right. We're just going to stop. And if you want to ask me a question, I'll answer. And that's how it has been here lately. Yeah. It's just, but and I, I see the, the light in his eyes. But the thing about it is I'm causing him to look in the scriptures. That's good. He said, I have never had anybody challenge me enough to make me want to go in there and look for it myself. Wow. Ooh. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And if I'm causing somebody to look in the scriptures yeah. to see if I'm correct or if, if, if I cause anybody just to look at the word in itself in general, yeah, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm leading on the right path. That's great. That's great. Do you, did, you, uh, did you lose some friends when you came over to Torah? Well, yeah, oh, yes, yes, my friend Josh, my God. Whenever I moved into my friend Josh's house after I got kicked out of another house because yeah, 
I yeah, think, so, I think I think I remember this story. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah, it was it was an awful situation. Yeah, and everything I owned, literally everything I owned, was destroyed. The only thing that I still have is this right here. Wow. And it has burn marks from whenever he was trying to light it on fire. Wow. Through it, and I have all my books are covered in oil because he tried to light them on fire. So, mm. what happened was I was living in Lono with my with my um, my brother Coy. And um, another friend was needing help, and I was, you know, I didn't have a job. I couldn't keep up with payments. A friend Coy said, well, I can take over the payments and all that. I said, all right, well, I'm going to have to move. So I moved in with another friend. The only reason why I moved in there is because he needed somebody to help him fix up his home. And I told myself, I was like, okay, this is my opportunity to learn what it is to be a servant. Yeah. We live in your house. I don't have a job but I'll serve you with anything you need. So I wanted to see what it felt like to physically be in somebody else's care. Anything he wanted me to do, I had to do it. Right. You know, and and so I, I learned a lot of lessons in that. And after I moved out of there, he actually pretty much kicked me out. Uh, he gave me an ultimatum of three days to find a job. Who finds a job in three days? Mm. And then after I found a job, he gave me two days to get a paycheck. Well, that's, that? that's not happening. <laughs> no, it's not good. That's a little unrealistic, yeah. So then I alluded to my friend Josh, and then all of a sudden, he had a lot of demons in him. That that is that is proof. He even admits the fact that he had, you know, he goes up to the top of a mountain and and builds stones and, and worships these rocks, and he, he's wow. just wow. like out of his mind, crazy. Yeah, and I was just, we had long conversations. And there was a point of time where I'm laying in the bed. He comes in there at like four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, bro, what's going on? And he gets all mad at me and he pulls a knife and sticks it to my throat. I said, come on, brother. I know where I'm going. Just just do it. Yeah. Go ahead. Kill me. You know? And he gets off of me. And, and there was a time where he punched me in the mouth for no reason. Then the night that he kicks me out of his house was on Hanukkah. Yeah. Last year on Hanukkah. I went to a neighbor's house. And we were just talking Bible. We were just talking, you know, scriptures. And we had really good conversations. Yeah. And he comes up griping and all this other stuff. And it's like, what does it mean to be a devil's advocate or a devil's reject? I was like, well, honestly, if you're rejected by the Satan, then that means you are following the commandments. Yeah. Because if you're not following the commandments, you're with him anyways. That's right. Yeah. There's, there's no, you, you can't get away from it. Yeah. And he got all mad. And he went in there. I had guitars, um, all my furniture. Everything I owned, he just threw out the window, broke everything, destroyed everything. And I still love that man. Yeah, that's good. And I've even told him before, I still love you, brother. Yeah. Even though you did all those things, you popped my tire, you yeah. sliced it. I could have called the cops. I could have gotten you arrested. Yeah. But you know what happened? Two two weeks later after I leave, he gets evicted. Ah. So he, he <laughs> and he loses everything he owns. Everything yeah. he had was gone. Wow. Because... Yeah, uh, he couldn't, he didn't have a way of getting everything out of the house. Right, right. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. This may be a little off topic, but I know um, we have a lot of a lot of different people living in different situations and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in your in your household, uh, are you are you the only one living for Torah right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, hard. Yeah, I I've experienced that myself. Uh, my daughter was with me. Uh, she was she was living for tour at the time. Um, tell just in your own words, without I mean I'm I'm not asking you to bash anybody at all, and that's not what the question's about. Uh, the the question's more about um, maybe some lessons you've learned in how to deal uh, with someone that's not keeping tour, how to still walk in love with them, uh, still have a relationship with them, and things like that. The main thing is patience. Amen. Patience. Yeah. That is the most. My girlfriend right now, she's like, you know, she says, I am so mean to this man, but he still loves me. Yeah. He still does things that are right. Yeah. I try my best to do it by her. Yeah. And you know, there's times where I get frustrated, but I don't sin against her. Yeah. I try not to. And the, I'm trying to show her the way in a subtle way to where I'm not being offensive. 
Yeah. Sometimes it comes across offensive because the word does offend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. Well, I mean, you know, he, didn't, he didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I know in my own walk, I know I've talked with Miranda. We've talked with lots of folks. When, when the, when the spirit of God begins to, to open you up to Torah, he's not beating you over the head with a baseball bat, right? Yeah. He's not dragging no. you kicking and screaming to Torah. Yeah. And that, all I can I, do is pray. I think that's something that, that we, we need uh, as a body of believers is to, you know, uh, one of those fruits of the spirit is, is long suffering, gentleness, meekness, you know, uh, what, what is, I don't, the, how many times I've been, I don't know how many times I've been called a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, what, you know, what's the definition of a meek person? A meek person is someone that has the power to overtake someone and, and does it, you know, yeah. and they, they, they will choose to, you know, you, you just beat up on me a little bit cause I know I could just take you out. Uh, whether yeah, it's like somebody like that. I think there was a video uh, that Henry Gordon did or something like that, or he says there was a man who who had a sword. He has the option to kill you, but he keeps it in his, in his sheep, even when everything's going bad. That's a good ex illustration. Yeah, that's you that's know, a good one. Carry on a sword with you. I could I could cut you down, but I want to I want to keep it in there. That's good. How 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 would you say how would you classify your uh, since coming to Torah? How would you say that your relationship with Yah has 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 been? Has it grown? Um, has it intensified? Tremendously. Yeah. I have never, ever been this close to the word itself. Yeah. Then there is something tangible there. There's yeah. something that you have to that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was going to the churches and stuff. The main, the biggest thing that you do is just go up to the front and pray. You go up, and repent, and get saved every week. Yeah, yeah. Like, who, needs, who needs Jesus? If you don't know Jesus, come to the front. Well, all these people they're in the church. They know they they say they know Jesus. Yeah, but, you know that's not what you should ask for whenever you go to the altar calls. Yeah. No, you should ask for the Holy Spirit. Come up here and receive the Spirit. Yeah. So yeah. whenever you receive that Spirit, He gives you the the, the desire and the power to walk in His ways. Amen. We Amen. shouldn't be asking people for altar calls to, to know Jesus. No, when you get the when you receive that spirit, when you're in a Christian church in the first place, that's you're expected to to, to want to know Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> you're in the church. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. and and I want to I just want to say this, you know, uh, we probably have a lot of new people watching. Um, everybody, I, I want you to know Austin is coming to us with just the realness of his life. Austin, you're not perfect. You're not walking toward perfectly right now. I'm sure you have. None of us are. None of us are, right? I mean, maybe Kinsley, you know, but that's. Uh, <laughs> so, she has a tour of her own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, we none of us are walking everything 100%. We're all still, you know, we're on, we're on different areas, different levels of growth. Uh, different yeah. uh, different areas of our faith. You know, we're, we're growing from faith to faith, from glory to glory, you know, and would you say that now that you're opened up into Torah um, and you're kind of lead, you're, you're reading a lot of the left, you know, to the, to, of the books of Matthew, you know, would you say that the spirit, oh, yeah. you're, you're getting more spiritual insight now when you, when you read stuff in the new Testament now? Oh yeah. Like, like for example, when, uh, whenever he's talking to the Samaritan woman, I didn't know who the Samaritans were. Right. Yeah. Until I went into the Old Testament and realized who they were. They were they were people brought in and they said they worshiped God, but they worshiped him in a different way. Right. Just as, you know, it, within Christianity, you know. They 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 love God. They all have a zeal for God. Yeah. But they're not worshiping him the way he wants them to worship him. Right. And what I see for me, every time he speaks of a woman in the scriptures in the, in the New Testament or even in the Old Testament, every time a woman is brought up I imagine that as being the ecclesia, the the, uh, the assembly. Yeah. So it, whenever I'm looking at her, he's talking to this woman who worships other gods, but thinks he's worshiping him. And he says, a time is coming and a time is now where the true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. Yeah. Well, what happens in between now and coming? Yeah. The temple is destroyed. The first believers were killed off. Yeah. 
Rome takes over the faith, and now we're waiting on that time that was coming. Yeah. And that yeah. time is coming is now, yeah. three days after his crucifixion. He says, he said that, you know, destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. He wasn't talking about his crucifixion. Right. I don't believe. Yeah. I believe he was talking about after three thousand years, I am coming back. Wow. It's good. I'm going. My spirit is going to come upon people, and you know, and it's mind blowing whenever you realize that when Christ was born, that's when the time of Pisces was going on. Yeah. The gathering of fish. Yeah. The Pisces, the two fish. Yeah. The Maserati. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So yes, they, the yeah. So okay, hang on, hang well, on. What's the, one with the, what's the one with the vessels? Hey, hang on, hang on the, one second. Hang on. A lot of our people don't know about the Maserat. They're they're oh, thinking they're, hang on, hang on, they're they're thinking you're talking. Hey, is that guy talking about that astrology stuff? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about the time. I'm talking about the signs of the times. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking up in the heavens. You got to know that the sun, moon, and stars. Are for times, oh. seasons, and yeah. years. Yeah. Yep. Or days, you know. Yeah. So the stars are for appointed times. Yep. Certain times of history. Yeah. So whenever you're looking at the stars and and you realize that we're living in the time of is it, is it Aries? What is that where he's pouring out the vessel? Yeah. You know, understanding that's what we're living now. We just came into that that period of time yeah. where after two thousand four hundred years of gathering of fish well now it's time for the father to be pouring out his understanding that's good. his his word his spirit and that's where we're living now we're living in that period of time yeah and that blew my mind when i realized that i'm like oh my god I, no wonder this is happening all over the world that's right. good. there's nothing to do with anybody it's, it's all him pouring out his understanding up from the heavens for you guys that may have never heard of what austin's talking about um, I don't, we've not done a teaching on it, have we? No. Okay. No. There, uh, I'll, I'll recommend and I'll, I'll put down in the, in the show notes here, guys. Uh, Chuck Missler has a, uh, Chuck's gone, already gone to be with, uh, be with y'all, but, uh, yeah. he had a tremendous teaching on the Maseroth and I'll see if I can find that and, um, uh, and link that in the, in the description below. But the Maseroth was a, uh, is basically uh, what God had designed from the beginning to tell the end all the way through uh, using yeah. the stars and, and, and everything that's that's placed in the firmament. And mm -hmm. even even in the book of Job, it talks about the Maseroth. And that's yeah. that was the uncorrupted form of the reading of the stars. And the constellations. And the constellations. All the stars have their own speech. They all speak and they all speak the same language. And, and every language on the earth knows their their signs and that's you one know. of the reasons we see in the book of jude that the angels <coughs> that came out of their order were so mm -hmm. severely punished uh just like just like moses when he struck the rock the second time well the first time he was supposed to strike the rock that the water comes out of the second time he was supposed to speak to it because it was all supposed to be a, a sign of Yeshua. Well, he yeah. struck the rock the second time and God said, you're out of order. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And because of that, you can't go in to the promised yeah. land. And, and God is... In, in the original Hebrew, it, it, it says that he should declare the rock. He yeah. doesn't necessarily speak to the rock. He says, right. declare the That's rock. It. That's it. So when you declare it, it's... It's completely, it's, it's, it's a different thought process. I'm like, yeah. whoa. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to get you <laughs> off of that, but I, I just, I know that I, I could hear in the back of my head people like, what's he talking about? Ethel, go get that rewind thing on there. I want to see what he's talking about. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that they understood uh, what you're talking about because listen, that's a that's something I would I would be willing to say that, that probably most Torah observant people don't no, know. yeah, I actually learned that. The how I learned that was from Zeitgeist, okay. their documentary they had. Yeah, because he was talking about how have you ever watched that? No, I mean it's 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 awful. I mean he talks about how everything yeah. he's saying is true. Yeah, in the sense of how Christianity has turned him into a pagan sun god. Right, you know, and they talked about the Pisces, and now he's talking about the, the is it the Aries or yeah. what is it the is it Aries? 
And I was like, when that when I when he said that, I was like, bing. I was like, oh man. Well, if that's you, what's happening right now. Yeah, if you if you've not, uh, I tell you what. Uh, after we after we put this out, you go back and, and, and look on. I'll send you the link for Chuck's teaching on it. He has yeah. a tremendous teaching on it. I don't know if you've ever listened to Chuck Missler. Yeah, I've actually listened. I've actually watched uh, some of it. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, I listened to it the day at work. Good, good, good. So hallelujah, that, that's good. But uh, I, I didn't mean to get all Very good. cut off in that. All right, the next <laughs> question. What are three of your favorite things about keeping tour? Oh, just the, I want to say fellowship, but I haven't had that yet. Okay. I'm still. You're still Lone Ranger in it out there. Yeah. Yeah, in a way. I'm, okay. I'm trying to find fellowship. Okay. But fellowship online is been amazing, you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, being able to bless my children on the Sabbath. That was huge um, that cool. on Friday yeah, nights. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then his feast. Yeah. It's just, that, that, that's, those are just massive to me. Right? Yeah. Do you find like yourself? Right now, I'm still in the process of building my sutra because tonight was, for me, I'm, I'm worn after the um, the other, the set of feast days. That, okay. For the Adam Pink, their, their, their calendar. Yep. Um, that's fine. And I still got wood out there to put together, but. I've been so busy, I haven't even had a chance to put it together. But it also hurts my heart because there's nobody here to help me. Yeah. Put it together, you know. Yeah. And I really want to ask the neighbor, you know, and you see, oh, he's a carpenter. And I went over there and talked to him the other day and we had a really good long conversation. And his eyes were kind of like, just kind of twinkling in a way. I was like, just, let's just pray. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Do you find yourself? Do you find yourself getting excited and looking forward to the Sabbath? Oh yeah, yeah. Every every, every Sabbath, I'm I'm, um, I'm not saying that I'm perfect with it because I still have buying and selling. That was one of the issues I was I was having with it. I was like, well, oh, crap. It's like, brother, let me let me say six kids, you know. <laughs> let me, yeah, let me let me say this to you. You know, uh, it we're we're still having to reprogram how we do things yeah. and it yeah. takes a while uh, uh that you know we, we we hear about the day of preparation all the time we uh our day of preparation i'm i'm at work until almost time you know, almost yeah. so dark miranda's home doing well, things. our weekends are messed up our weekend should be the last day of our work week should be thursday and friday should be our saturday and saturday should be our sunday absolutely yeah because we <laughs> yeah yeah so we'll we'll have the we'll have the weekend off you know the saturday and sunday yeah. well we can't go anywhere we can't buy anything saturday uh and then sunday some a lot of the places we want to go were closed yep so yeah, yeah and it's uh, and you know See, most, and the thing about it is, is in in the tour itself it never actually says that we aren't to buy or sell. Now, I know it does say later on in the in Ezekiel, it talks about how they, they're wanting to, to, to do the commerce. But I always thought that it was carrying a burden on the yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. And whenever I see them carrying a burden on the Sabbath, I'm thinking of religion. Yeah. Like, on those days, you get rid of anything that has to do with religion or anything like that and yeah. just worship him alone. Yeah. Well, that's how I interpret that. I'm not saying yeah. that that buying or selling has anything to do with it. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. Well, um, brother, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep asking yeah. God to <laughs> yeah to bless you with that and 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 learning that. Uh, yeah. I know the scriptures talks about that we're not supposed to have uh, we're not supposed to do any work. We're not supposed to make our yeah. our maids fellow, our maids, maids or work, fellow, yeah. fellow people do work. And uh, we have a lot of technical things that we have nowadays that okay well if that's true then is it work for me to go flip on a light switch am i making the yeah. power company work i mean you could go yeah i i think when you get past the spirit of what god is trying to have you do you miss things he doesn't want you to work he doesn't want you to make yeah. other people work see like on the seventh day i won't yeah. go i won't go shopping i won't go to the grocery store and go shopping yeah but i will go to the grocery store and grab me a sandwich if i need one if yeah. I don't have anything else and I still need to feed my family, I'll grab everything they need for that day and we'll yeah. go. 
Well, and, and we, we found ourselves, I mean, let's, you know, this is, uh, people say they like this about us, that we're honest and we're open about things. Yeah. Well, there's been times on our Sabbath when we thought we had everything prepared for and, oh, we have to go do something. We have to go here do something. And, well, I didn't, I didn't get gas in the truck. Well, now I've got to go get gas in the truck. Or, or something. My car broke down and we had to take it to AutoZone to see what was wrong with it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's always... And I believe the Father has grace for those things. I think he I does. Has, I, and I, you know, I... If I, our heart is in the right place that we, he wants, that we want to please him, I think he's still pleased with we're, us. We're still learning. We're still learning how mm -hmm. to please him. And I, I'm telling you, you know, you guys are, sir, you guys are on a different calendar with uh, mm -hmm. Sukkot totally cool i'm super excited that you guys are, are you're doing sukkot you know yeah. uh regardless of when and i i kind of think the father has that same you know you you you've mentioned about your, your kiddos and stuff like that i mean my, how many times when they were growing up they may not have done something totally right but you saw them with the joy and the fervor in their heart they were doing something uh to help try to please dad how cool is that, mm -hmm. right? And and you think about oh, yeah. those things. Yeah. So we got you know, a four year old Jeannie. She's a mess. I love her to death. She'll sit there and blow that shofar. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, shofar better than anybody else in the house other than me. You know, uh -huh. but <laughs> yeah, if he's four years old. Oh well, hey, we want we want to see that on a video one time. Hey, there yeah, you go. yeah, I have to record that for us. We'd I'd love to put that oh, on. Yeah. That's good. What would you What would you say to someone who is like? Maybe they just found our channel. We're, we're getting people finding our channel for different reasons. What would you say to someone that's watching this tonight, Austin, that is just starting to look into Torah? They just started, they, they're hearing this Torah word. They they heard someone say something about a Ruach, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know what, what? I would say um, be careful jumping all the way in. Yeah. When you jump all the way in, full head first like yeah. i did yeah it will cause a sense of frustration and honestly a hatred yeah so take your time find things like if, you, if you're wanting to start doing the sabbath day start keeping the sabbath day and then slowly bring in the the the, the dietary instructions and then slowly go into oh my neighbor's dog go get your dog and, you know yeah. help him out we did that one day we were driving on the freeway there was a dog on the freeway. We pick up the dog, bring it to our home, yep. and call the pound and all that. We find out whose dog it is. The guy lived down the road. And now we're good friends with him. Yeah. So and, and, and I mean, listen, because of that obedience, you know. Some right. some but, of you some of you listening may not understand, but what Austin was describing is actually a Torah commandment. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Commanded, if you see your your neighbor's animal get out of their fence or wherever, yep. you are commanded to pick up that animal, take it to your home, and find the owner. And, and, and listen, was that a burden on your heart to do the right thing there? Was that a was no. that a drudgery thing, no. or did you like? Oh, I gotta go do this. I know you you get yeah. excited. Now, one of the burdens whenever we had to watch him for over two weeks whenever he went to to their friend's house and he pooped all over our house. <laughs> But <laughs> that was just picking up. That, that was just picking up all that, that stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. But, oh. <laughs> but oh. no. If, if if you're first starting to walk in the Torah, yeah. Go with what the Spirit is leading you to. Right. I mean, I can't tell you to, to just go in slow or go in fast. Or it, it, that is something that the Spirit has to lead you into. Yeah. I went in head first because I didn't have anybody else to tell me not to do it. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a wife. I didn't have all I had was just me and my daughter. Yeah. And when I told my daughter all these things, she was she was all aboard. She was like, "All right, that's what we're not going to be eating did, yeah. no more. Yeah. We're not going to be celebrating Halloween and Christmas and all those things anymore." And she was all for it. She was, you know, at least that's what she's told me. <laughs> well, but, um, yeah, and that's a that's a good thing you bring yeah. up about your kids. You know, and they so, sometimes the kids don't understand that they, you know, they're 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 still hearing all this stuff from all yeah. these other avenues or even other parents. But I would, I would, say, I would say take your time. Yeah. Take your time. Um, there, just yeah, read the word and just live the word. I mean. There's there's still some topics. Uh, you can, you know, Miranda's a witness to this, that I've, 
I, you know, when I first came to Torah, I, I put up on that shelf and I said, okay, I'm not going to touch this yet. We were talking about some things here the other day. I won't get into the, the, the topics, but I told you, you know, gosh, since I've come to Torah, I, I still haven't actually grabbed that off the shelf and really looked at it. I'm still, yeah, still I've done that too. I'm still enjoying learning where we're at with Sabbath and I'm learning more about, you know, uh, just how how God's Torah really affects us and how wonderful it is. You know, and, and like, I love what you say. Take your time. Take, take your, time. your time. That's good. Because if you don't take your time, you're, all you're going to do is just cause yourself a lot of heartache. Well, you'll, you'll be trying to do stuff because this guy Not said to do it. This guy said <laughs> to do that. This guy said yeah. to do this. And then, and then all don't you're doing. Don't listen to anyone. Don't listen to no one. Just listen yeah. to the spirit. Yeah. You, know, that, you can listen to people all day, but it's up to you to figure out, is this person telling the truth? If they are, mm -hmm. let me get into the word. Yep. Yep. And prove That's it good. out first. Yep. Always prove the word first. That's Always good. go back and search it out with your, to yourself. That's good. Speaking of the word, do you have a favorite verse about Torah? It would be the Shema. I love the Shema. Okay. Hear, O Israel, God our Elohim, Yah is one. Love the Lord your Elohim all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And I truly did not understand what that meant until I came into Torah. Oh, amen. Amen. I did not truly know what that meant to actually love him. Because Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Well, who is he? He is the commandments. Yeah. He is the word of Yah. Yeah. So it was like a lot, everything, everything flipped. My entire life flipped upside down. Right. But I wouldn't change it for a world for the world. Amen. I would not change it for one bit, and I'm still getting persecuted every day, every, you know, through all these things. And yeah, I take them with joy That's because I, I know where where it leads me. You know, uh, <laughs> something I learned at uh, the Isaiah 46 conference that uh, my daughter and I went to back in 2019, I think, maybe 18. I forget. I think it was 19. We we uh, we were watching the River Winds, uh, Chief Joseph Riverwind and, and his wife Laura Lynn, and they brought up about the Shema, the three Hebrew letters that make up Shema. If you look at mm -hmm. the uh, the Paleo Hebrew, literally uh, it the three Hebrew, the letters mean destroy, chaos, experience. So yep. if you want to destroy the chaos experience in your life. You're to you're to Shema, and what does mm -hmm. Shema mean? It means to hear Hearing and them. obey. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. Hey, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, listen, we we've, we've been asking you some questions and things, and uh, do you do you have anything left on your heart? You just you feel really led to share, or or uh, well, I want to share one of my dreams that I had that was a confirmation of me walking in this way. Okay, I got two dreams I want to share. Okay. Um, I was walking the Torah for about, uh, I would say about a little under a year. And I'm sitting there talking to myself and I'm like, I'm going to go up there to this, the Pentecostal church and tell the pastor how it is. Oh boy. <laughs> I went home. Yeah. I have never went home and went straight to sleep, but I went home and he put me into a deep sleep mm -hmm. and I had a dream and I had a dream that I was inside of a school gymnasium. And there was a desk with a man sitting in the desk. Yeah. I said, oh, there's the preacher. So I started walking up to him. I get to him. I said, we need to start keeping the commandments. And I turn around and I found myself inside of a classroom full of teenage kids who were probably 10, 11 years old. You yeah. Know, really young kids. Yeah. And I turned back around and that man has turned into a woman. And I'll tell the woman, I need, we need to get back to the commandments. She smiles at me. I turn back around. Those kids have started becoming teenagers. I look back at her. We need to start keeping the commandments. I turn back around, and I found myself sitting on top of a roof, and those teenagers became adults, and they started walking up these stairs. And I woke up, and I realized that this woman that I saw in my dreams was wisdom. Oh. I always see her in my dreams. Wow. When I get a revelation, 
this woman pops up in my dream. So I, what I saw, what I was saying on that was, I don't need to go to the preachers. I need to go and teach the people. Yeah. Not the preachers. Yeah. But have their own, you know, you know, leave them alone. The, the yeah. blind lead the blind, they both fall into the pit. Yeah. So I never strove, strove to want to go talk to a preacher again about like, and then that matter yeah. again. And then my other dream was I was walking in a, I was in a ballroom full of people wearing nice dressed up clothes. Wow. And I see this woman where he has, she had long, long hair standing next to a man. They're both holding champagne. I said, we need to get back to the commandments. She slaps me in the face. I turn around and I see this other woman with really short black hair. And she says, come with me. And we start walking and we start walking down a path down. I see the, the building on one side, the road on one side, a sidewalk and then a road in front of me. And she says, keep walking this path. Do not stray. Then I woke up. Wow. And to me, that was a confirmation of. Yeah. I'm walking in the right path. That's good. Yeah. That's good, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Did you have anything else you wanted to ask? All right. Well, also, we thank you for your time. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to flip over, do something. Don't, don't hang up. I'll be right back with you. But uh, guys, we're, uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight. And uh, yeah, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Well, guys, listen. We've uh, we've really enjoyed uh, listening to Austin tonight. Um, Losing his voice. <laughs> Losing my voice right there. Uh, very very excited to have Austin on tonight, guys. Listen, we 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 appreciate you watching this program. We really feel led that, uh, especially during all the times that's going on right now, we need to be encouraging one another. Uh, we have we have people all over this world uh that are opening up to torah they're opening up and and they're having all kinds of experiences and i really feel that we need to to have some testimonies out there to let people know hey wow they're going through the exact same thing i think sometimes they see well jeff's just a minister or you know miranda's married to a minister well they've had all these special things that have gone on in their life well, I, I really want people to know that uh, that God is no respecter of persons. And so that's what this series is going to be about, is, is about just regular folks uh, that Yah is speaking to and bringing to Torah. Uh, you know, they're, they're already born again. They're already loving God. But God is opening their eyes to the truth of his word, the truth that, that uh, Torah is truth, right? Right. That's one of my favorite scriptures. The, you know, the Torah is truth. So when Yeshua says, or Jesus says, I'm the way, well, the Torah is talked about as the way. He says, I'm the truth. Well, the Torah is the truth. And he says, I'm the life. Well, the Torah is the life too. So he's saying, I am the Torah. And so guys, we, we, need, to, we need to get really uh, into things and, and see that, that God is blessing us and, and he's desiring to, to hear more of our testimonies the bible says that we overcame uh the enemy and in in this scenario the bible says the enemy is coming after the ones that love god and are keeping his commandments yeah right it says how do we overcome by the blood of the lamb by the word of our testimony and that we love not our lives unto death so praise god praise god well, guys, listen, we're excited. We thank you so much for tuning in. If uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we ask that you hit the uh, uh, the like button, the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get the notifications of, you know, a couple days after we go live. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, if you see this on Facebook, give it a like, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies. Uh, guys, we want to we want to see people get touched and changed. Listen, we we uh, we we send this we send these messages out all over. Uh, to different kinds of groups we send it to i send them to truck drivers groups i even I've, I've even sent some of these videos into uh witches groups and different things like this we wherever we feel led to to share our videos and stuff like that 
uh, be bold guys and share things out because there there are people that are looking for honest truth they've, they've gone to the churches they've not they've, they've found hypocrisy they found the uh, you know the, the the truth you know about uh, the paganism that's enveloped enveloped the churches and people are looking for realness and i'll tell you what they will find realness when they get into the torah so praise god guys we love you we appreciate you joining us tonight and we will see you guys later shalom bye bye <laughs>